Well, hello. Welcome to my apartment. This feels a lot like Mr. Rogers. That's kind of weird. But uh, before I let you in and show you around, uh, first let me show you what this place looked like when I bought it. show you my kitchen. Now when I first moved into this place, as you saw, uh, it was just done by, I think there's like a little old lady here or something. Everything was the most basic budget sort of option. Nothing really had like any character to it. And I basically, I wanted to turn my place into like a gothic mansion. But the problem is my place is only 500 square feet. It's really small, so I wanted to take a gothic mansion and just like kind of cram it in. So there's a lot of space saving stuff and things like that, but um, we'll get to that in a second. But first, the cabinets. These are the original cabinets that I had before, but I painted them. So I used something, It's uh, I think it's Rust-Oleum ca Cabinet Creations or something. And basically you like scrub down your cabinets and then you paint over it. And then you put like a, like a glaze on it and a veneer. So I did that to give it this kind of look. Um, also, I added these little knobs on it. These um, serve no function, really. I mean, you can use them. I use them, but there's a little handle right here. <laughs> and by the way, this is a co-op. It's just kind of like a New York City thing. I think they might have them in like Los Angeles or something. It's basically like a condo, but not as good. And if if you're not familiar with condos, condos are kind of like a house, but not as good as a house. So it's kind of like that, but they're better than an apartment. So it's got like, it's like having your own place, but it's small and there's like a few restrictions to it, but you own it. And because of that, this place was kind of like wiped me out. So as I show you around, a lot of the things that you'll be seeing are things that I did myself. Uh, I tried to save costs wherever I could. And one big expense would have been to get new cabinets installed. So I went the cheap route, and I'm happy with it. I think they look really good. Uh, also, the uh, countertop. Yeah, basically how this worked is I had the plastic countertops here, and I painted over them with um, like a black paint, and then you texture over the top of it to kind of give it this uh, this marbling effect. And then you cover it with like a, like a thick protective kind of coating. So it's not the sort of thing where you want to like chop on it, you don't want to put like a hot pot on it. So it's not quite as good as having a granite countertop, but it does its job. I did this about two years ago and it's holding up pretty well, but there are a few little spots where it's been chipping off. So uh, I might touch those up, but this was kind of like more of a temporary thing. So I think I might actually get um, actual granite countertops at some point, but for a quick fix, this was a good, good way to go. And it was like less than a hundred dollars to do. Uh, next we've got the, the backsplash. Again, this was all just the same sort of crap. Uh, the same sort of plastic that they made the countertops out of was all around the walls as well. So I took tin, tin ceiling, ceiling tiles, and I put those all around. Uh, I added little borders to match the cabinets. What I like about this is that they're magnetic. So I have like these spice canisters and they're just kind of like... Uh, this I had to add myself. There wasn't one when I moved in. Probably the biggest purchase that I made for this place was this stove because the, the stove that was here, it worked, but it was disgusting. I don't think anyone had ever cleaned it. So I just kind of like started scrubbing at it with a Brillo pad and it was just like so thick with like grease and dust. I'll show you a photo of half of this clean and half of it dirty. And it was at that moment where I saw that, saw that comparison where I decided to just like chuck the whole thing. And that was just the exterior. When I lifted up like this part to kind of clean inside, it was just like a cake of congealed oil inside. The, the refrigerator I think is probably the next to go. And this is the original fridge. It's nothing great. Uh, do you want to see what's inside my fridge? No, you can't. One small space saver here is having a magnetic strip up here. 
keeps my meat cleavers out of the way. The drawer fronts on here. I was walking down the street and I found on the side of the road somebody was throwing out like this large platform, but it was very ornate and it had these things hammered into the side of it. The garbage man was gonna take that and it was just gonna get demolished. So I like the way it looks so much, but I was like, I can find some use for these little plates. So I took a screwdriver and I pried off the plates and um, yeah, that little platform lives on in some small way. The rest of it, I'm sure, is in a dump somewhere. The floors are just stick-on tiles that I put over the linoleum. I really do not like how these look because uh, black just shows everything, but for the time being, it's better than what was here before. If you direct your attention towards the ceiling, I have uh, actual vintage light fixtures in there. And that is one trick that I learned in, in kind of converting my place into a gothic mansion, is that you can buy light fixtures for nothing. I don't know, it was like less than $50 on eBay. The problem with these things is that they have wiring that will kill you, so I had to learn how to rewire it. It wasn't that hard to do, and it makes like such a difference. The, the fixtures that were here were just these hideous little globe sort of lights. I think they were just like, whatever was cheap in the 80s. They were throughout the entire apartment. So I like took all those down and I replaced them with these antique fixtures, which are actually a lot cheaper than just going to Home Depot and buying brand new ones that look nice. Oh, I replaced them all except for the one that's over there, which uh, you probably can't even focus on because it's so bright. Um, one fun thing with this is, I'll actually turn it off so you can see it. That is uh, a very large light bulb. That is a 250 watt light bulb. And the reason why I put that in there is for videos. I don't want to be bothered to drag my lighting in here uh, when I shoot in the kitchen, so I put that there to give me more light when I shoot. And also it's kind of nice to have such a bright light in there. And how you can get away with a 250 watt light bulb is uh, it's LED. So even though it's you know emits 250 watts, uh, is is the, well, it's the equivalent, the actual wattage is like, you know, like 40 watts or something. The only thing in my entire co-op that is uh, from Ikea is this thing. And I bought it off Craigslist for like, oh, it was free. It was free on Craigslist. One of my favorite things in my, in my place is the washer and dryer because no, like very few people in New York City get that, even though I don't really have the proper hookups for a regular washer and dryer. I mean, I could get them installed, but it would be like a huge pain in the neck. So I got this one that just like wheels over to the sink, so you can like plug it in. It's maybe a little bit lame to wheel it over to the sink every time I want to wash my clothes, but it's nice. <laughs> nice to be able to not have to go down to the laundromat. And uh, right here I have a little uh, dryer unit. There is no uh, way for the uh, vapors to get out. So there's like this interesting contraption that actually collects the vapor in this little bucket down there. So it like goes up and then drips down so it doesn't end up, you know, ruining your walls or anything. I love this thing. This is something that I got, I think in college. I got it originally at Walmart. It was less than a hundred dollars. And what I like about it is uh, first you have like a little extra counter then if you want to have a kitchen table, you just do that. So it's got like a little drop leaf table to it. And then you have two little stools that hide away in it like that. And on top of all that, you have uh, little drawers. I want a towel rack. I don't use, but you know, it's got like so many little things all in one tiny unit. What it looked like originally was like absolutely terrible. It was just like brown, looked cheap, looked like something that you got at Walmart for college. So what I did is uh, I painted over it using uh, the cabinet paint to do the outside so it matches the cabinets. And for the tabletop to give it a little extra protection, I used the same uh, uh, protective coating that I had for the countertops. I had a little bit left over on that, so I put that on here. So it, uh, it holds up to, you know, having dinner on it. Totally fine. So 
let's go into the main room here. Uh, you probably have noticed my sexy couch if you've watched any of my videos within the past couple of years. But usually if you want to get like a seti sort of um, piece like this, they're expensive. It's gonna be like thousands of dollars. Uh, this was I think $700, something like that, which is very cheap for what it is. And the reason why it's cheap is that they make this um, in Indonesia and then they ship them by um, like cargo containers to the US and they keep them in warehouses and then they are able to kind of like get very budget shipping on these from Indonesia. It's all hand carved and uh, the carving's really nice. This is not real leather, so good for all the vegans watching, no worries, this isn't leather, but it is a very cheap uh, imitation leather, so it doesn't really hold up super well, showing like a little bit of wear. And the worst thing about it is that when you sit in it, you can feel where the wood supports are. Like I have, you know, it's like one right there <laughs> and one right there. It wasn't like that when I first got it, but over time it started to sink. And I don't know what they stuffed this with, but I think I need to put more in it. So that's uh, probably going to be a future change for the channel is I might have a new couch or I will attempt to reupholster this myself and from then on I'm going to have just a really garbage looking couch because I'm probably not going to do it right. Underneath the couch I keep all my filming supplies and everything so um, just to keep them out of the way which maybe I'll show you that stuff in a future video, like how I do a setup, but I keep that all out of the way underneath the couch. Um, now if you're curious about the paintings, I've got one right here and the one in the kitchen. Those are both done by my sister. She's a very talented painter. She did this one, I think, in high school. So uh, yeah, that's where, that's where I got those. Uh, the one that's on the wall over here, if you want to see that one, uh, bleak image, I know, but it's kind of like my, my hang in there, baby. This is not a real painting. It is a print on a canvas that I got from pictorum.com. And the artist is, is an artist I really like. He does, you probably have seen some of his work. He does a lot of like political imagery and he's a very talented surrealist artist. Uh, I can't pronounce his last name though. <laughs> it's Powell and this. <laughs> That's his last name. Kowinski? Yeah, I don't know. It's Powell something. Above the painting, I have this projector screen. So this comes down. I don't have a TV or anything. I don't really watch television so much. But I do watch a lot of movies, so I always really wanted to have my own, like, cinema. <laughs> so this is my little movie theater. I have a big old screen here, and on the other side I've got a little projector here. So this little projector is just hooked up to a PlayStation 3, which I use for Blu-rays. Uh, I don't really play video games so much anymore. Once in a huge while, I'll, I'll play a game, but this is uh, mostly for Blu-rays. Fun fact, if you need a Blu-ray player, PlayStation 3s are very cheap. You can get one on eBay for like, you know, like $30, $40. Blu-ray players tend to be a little bit more money. I also have a little Roku device in there that just connects the projector to Netflix and uh, YouTube and all of that. So this is probably my favorite DIY thing that I did in my co-op. This is a TV table. It's a sort of table that has a lift top. So when you sit behind it, you can actually like lift it up like this and have a, an extra little table so you can eat your TV dinner while you're watching TV, which is amazing. I was so happy about finding this. And this is another thing that I got for free. It was on uh, the free stuff section of Craigslist. When I got it originally, it was the same sort of like cheap budget furniture look, but it actually had like a nice hard wood to it. It's not like particle board or anything. So it's probably kind of old, but what I did to it is I painted the top with uh, actually the same stuff that I use for my counters, just to give it like a protective coating. I added pieces of picture frame molding around it, just to kind of give it a little, little something else. And um, you know, I don't know if you put it together, but I was kind of going for like a coffin aesthetic. I lined it 
with velvet. And to save money on the velvet, I actually bought a dress from a thrift store for, I don't know, it was like four bucks or something. I cut it up, I lined it inside these, and then I added some trim to the ends of it to kind of give it like a casket sort of aesthetic to it. And I just keep, you know, wires and, and whatever in it. And to top it all off, on the very edges, I have little tiny coffin handles. These are real, but they're not used, don't worry. Very morbid, I know, but kind of great. So next we have the bedroom. And this bed is the ultimate space saver because this is a Murphy bed. What you do for Murphy beds is you fold over the, um, the sheets like this. I think my cat's underneath here, so let me just make sure she's not in the gears. There she is. <laughs> you lift this up like so. You fold this in. And it converts into my home gym. I bought this thing unfinished and then I covered it with chalkboard paint so I could put like my different uh, exercises and stuff on the chalkboard. And then to give it a little bit of an antique aesthetic, I bought these uh, antique yard sticks. When this is up, then I have my mats underneath. I don't like these mats. Uh, as you can see, they're kind of like, set, they don't hold together very well, but they're just like uh, puzzle piece mats. And they also collect cat hair, as you can see. So uh, I think I might replace these, but it is, it is nice to just like lift it up and then be able to have mats underneath that I can use for all my uh, stretching and stuff like that. Uh, as well as a few pieces of equipment. This is a yoga bolster that fits perfectly underneath. And this is a uh, split stretching machine, which also just fits perfectly underneath. So I turn this out, put this guy up, put a wheel here. And this is a way to torture yourself to learn how to do a straddle split. Turn this little guy. It's like totally medieval, but does the trick. Up there is some extra storage. I wanted some more lighting for the room, and I want it kind of like up high. So I put LED strips up on the top of the Murphy bed. So I can like, using this little remote control, I can turn them on and off. It's not just storage, exercise, bedroom, chalkboard. It's also light. <laughs> When they installed my Murphy bed here, uh, because there's like a little piece that juts out of the wall, it couldn't go all the way. And also it's got like a, a window and everything. You wouldn't want it all the way against the wall here. So there's about 10 inches of space from here to here. So I found a very narrow bookshelf and I put that in there. And it's great. I keep all my um, yoga stuff in here. So this little corner right here is like the ultimate space saver. I managed to like shove so much stuff in this one little spot. If I could direct your attention to these windows. Uh, the windows originally, when I moved in, had a lot of problems with them. <laughs> well, these windows were uh, very old and there was so much condensation between the panes of glass that you couldn't see through them. It was like very blurry, at least, to see through them. So I wasn't getting a whole lot of light. And on top of that, there were these big metal security bars on the windows. Uh, and that is a, a relic from the 1980s. Because in the 80s, uh, New York City was a much more dangerous place than it is now. And when I moved in, the realtor was like, oh, just get rid of those. You don't need those. I don't, everybody in, in, in this neighborhood has taken them down. But I felt a little bit unsafe not having some sort of security because I live on a fire escape. So it's like, what's stopping somebody from walking up the fire escape and just like coming in, breaking the glass and like coming in if I don't have bars on my windows. So what I did is I invested in a security system. So I got rid of the bars, I got new windows, and then I got um, Simply Safe, which is a, a security system that you can get for your house as well but it's perfect for apartments. So what I have on these windows are little readers. So if you open a, a window, it will set off an alarm. And if you don't turn off the alarm, it'll call the police. 
Also, if somebody were to break the glass, I have a little um, sensor that can sense whether or not it hears the sound of breaking glass. So with those little security uh, elements, I feel safe now without having to have hideous metal bars on the window. And it made such a huge difference to get light into my apartment. Below the window, I have a radiator that when I moved in, this was completely covered in paint. Probably like a quarter inch of paint across the entire thing. And because it's a radiator, which, you know, gets hot, all that paint was like cracked and gnarled looking. It looked absolutely terrible. So I went to town at this thing with a paint stripper, and I stripped off all of that paint, so it went down to the bare metal, which is probably original to the building. The uh, building's from the 1940s, and I'm pretty sure that looks like a 1940s radiator. And as I've been going through my co-op, I've been noticing a lot of little things like that. Like, original bits from when the building was erected are still kind of like lurking in this place. I'll show you another one. Like, if you go over here to this door, this is a, an original uh, brass door plate. So I'm sure that this was original to the building, but when I moved in, this was covered in paint from just generations of supers coming in and just quick fixing everything and just covering everything with paint without bothering to tape those off. So what I did with that is I put paint stripper on it and I just stripped off layer and layer and layer of paint until I got down to the bare metal, which was interesting because uh, as I did that, I can kind of see what people were painting the rooms. And at one point in time, this door was pink, bright pink. All right, so let's close these so I'm not backlit anymore. And these are blackout curtains, by the way, so it makes for good movie watching. Vostok is gonna show you the next part, which is my desk. This is uh, yet another antique. I got this off of eBay. It was, again, very cheap. I forget how much, but probably like 50 bucks or something, plus, you know, whatever it was for shipping was probably a lot more than what it cost. And this is like, like solid. Like it's like a nice solid wood uh, desk. And somebody painted over it repeatedly, like several generations of people painting over it. But then to top it off, they put, um, a sticker on it. I don't know what you call this. It's not a veneer. It's like a very thin it's like plastic sticker that you would put to line a drawer that was peeling and ripped apart and just, it looked awful. I stripped off all of that and then I uh, went over it with a wood stain and then I put a, um, an oil over the top of it, but it's uh, so much better than it was before. The crime that I committed, however, is not from this place, but because of my last place. I got this desk because of the size it was, and it would have fit perfectly in the spot next to my Murphy bed. But whoever measured it didn't measure from this bit. They measured from the table top. So the size that it was was actually a little bit longer because of this lip. So it didn't fit next to my Murphy bed. I know there's a special place in hell for me for this, but I had to cut a chunk of this off in order to fit it in my last apartment. That apartment was bad, guys. Now you may notice that I have a calendar with a meerkat on it. There you go. Antique writing desks like this are perfect for desktop computers. The uh, little writing shelf that comes out that originally would be for writing letters is perfect for a mouse pad and a mouse. And the drawer is perfect for a keyboard. Both of these pieces of furniture here, this curio cabinet and this, um, I don't know what you call it, display stairs, whatever that is, I found both of those on the side of the road. So I was actually looking for a curio cabinet. I was looking for a curio cabinet, like scouring around online. I, I remember looking that morning for a curio cabinet and then going outside to go to a grocery store. And then on the way home, I saw a curio cabinet on the side of the road. 
I went back out, I picked up that curio cabinet and dragged that home. And when I got that, because that's the thing that I, I noticed, I noticed that this thing was there too. So I went back and I got that. And I think that's about it for the main room. So let's go through this mysterious door over here. So this is a thing from older apartments in New York City, is they would have a bathroom with a dressing area in it. So this is where I have my, uh, my clothes and everything. This is my prop cabinet where I keep all the stuff that I use for um, my performances. A uh, little globe so I can figure out where I'm gonna go next. Here's Vostok again. This is hers. This is her little special area. Here's something to point out. Uh, this is a light switch plate. When I moved in, they were all cracked plastic. And it's such an easy thing just to go and replace those with like a metal one. Oh, up here we have another nice light fixture that I put in that I forget how much it was. It was like 20 bucks or something though. Uh, I've got a mirror here and a fuse box. And then I have this additional little door here. You're not allowed to know what's inside this door. I'm not going to tell you what's inside this door. You cannot find out what is in that door. It's mine. Okay, so let's go into the bathroom. This is another flush mount light fixture that I got, got off eBay. Yeah, I love that light fixture. It's probably my favorite one in the, in the entire apartment. I decided to go a little bit dramatic in here and put black paint in my bathroom. And I have a reason for it. This bathroom has tile going up half the wall. I wanted this to match the rest of my place. That's kind of like a little bit haunted house kind of aesthetic. And if I put anything in here that was a light color, it just was too light. Uh, the toilet, which I have mentioned in, in past videos, is a Japanese toilet. So it needs to be plugged in in order to work. There is no outlet over there. I just ran a wire from the toilet into the dressing area where the next available outlet is. So there was just like a bare wire going across this uh, threshold here. So I made this little wooden um, saddle to cover up the wire. So I think that's about it. I'm going to put a cost breakdown in the description below so you can see how much all this stuff cost me. Spoiler, it wasn't that much. I'll also put links to some of the products that I talked about in this video in case you're interested in any of this stuff, like cabinet paint or Murphy bed or what have you. I'll put that below. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.